Hello beautiful souls and welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so very much for joining me here today. It's the Empress aka Kelsey and today we are going to be bringing forth messages from the mermaids. So the mermaids have a very special message meant for you today. So out in front of you here we have four different cards to choose from and I'm going to ask you to take a couple of deep breaths, really ground yourself, connect to your intuition, connect to your guides and ask which one of these mermaids out in front of you has the messages that you need to hear at this time. And here we have mermaid number one, two, three, and four. And I will have the timestamps to the beginning of each reading in the description box below, as well as pinned in the comments section. You can also find the links to the cards that I'm using in the description box for anybody who feels interested or called to any of the decks that I use here today. So with all of that being said, go ahead and pause the video if you still need a moment, and I'm going to go ahead and move on to mermaid number one. Hello, my beautiful souls, and welcome, welcome to your reading here. You guys chose mermaid number one, and we are going to go ahead and get right into it. Starting off here, you guys have Aventurin and Sunstone. Um, for the stones that were on your card and these are very very um, connected to abundance and success so I do feel for a lot of you guys that there is some sort of blessing trying to come in you guys also chose the abundance mermaid which I absolutely love I really feel for group number one that there is there's something to be received for you guys that is trying to come in that either you are being asked to be aware of so that you can be open to receive it or um, this could be confirmation for some of you guys that what you're doing is working if you've been kind of feeling like what you're doing isn't working or like maybe doubting yourself or doubting what you're doing um, this is definitely a message coming in for you saying you are on the right path for some of you guys though there is a need surrounding you that I, I feel for some of you guys that chose this pile there's somebody around you that may need help or assistance in some way shape or form and it's it's almost like you are being asked to lend a helping hand in some way for group number one I'm sorry if you can hear my dog sometimes she um, feels the need to have conversations with me and when I'm speaking she thinks that I'm talking to her so uh, uh, let's go ahead and get into your reading here. That was the kind of first initial message. So group number one, being open to receive, practicing gratitude in order to really open your energy up to receive or kind of transforming your energy as though you've already received something. So really practicing gratitude, being open to receive and helping others. If you see that anybody around you may be struggling um, in any way, shape or form that you are able to assist with, I really feel for group number one, there's something here where you're being asked to offer your time or your energy or your resources to somebody else who may really need that energy right now. Um, as well as for some of you guys, there is an energy here of working on your self-worth and making sure that you believe you are worthy and deserving of what it is that you are asking for because our belief is everything. I feel group number one, our belief um, about ourselves, about what we deserve, about the life that we want to have or the life that we believe we are destined to or doomed to depending on how you look at it is everything and that is what we create our life around subconsciously so there is a need for some of you guys here to really dive into allowing yourself to believe helping yourself believe that you are worthy of abundance and that you are worthy of what you're asking for for some of you guys too you are receiving some spiritual kind of gifts blessings this could be kind of answers or clarity or messages coming in to help you this could also be activations in your energy or in certain abilities that are meant to help you attain something in the physical interesting so um 
working with like the law of attraction and your manifestations are going to be very beneficial for you right now, group number one. But let's get into your cards and see kind of where this abundance is trying to come in at for group number one and maybe where you're being asked to help somebody else at even. So we have air. Group number one, we have the element of air, open-mindedness, objectivity, and learning. So group number one, you guys may be um, being asked to maybe teach somebody something or to help somebody learn how to obtain abundance on their own or how to get out of the hard spot that maybe they're in. Um, this doesn't mean that, okay, so group number one, what I'm really seeing here, for one, we have Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, the, the air elements of the zodiac. Um, but what I'm really seeing here is like this, the air elements are really, they're all connected to other people around us, right? So Gemini is the twins and it's very much so about our social environment, our social networking, our social connections and the way we interact with other people. Libra is all about the relationship aspects, like profound relationships, romantic relationships and love. Uh, and Aquarius is kind of the house of friendship and um, humanity really so all the air signs are very much connected to humanity to our relationships to the way we connect to other people so you guys may be an air sign you don't have to be but i really feel for you guys that there's something here where you are being asked to help somebody around you learn how to pick themselves up. So by offering them a helping hand and teaching them how to obtain the things that they need by helping them obtain like the initial things that they need and teaching them the process of kind of getting back up after being knocked down, I feel is something very significant here for group number one. Interesting. And this open-mindedness um, and learning really again speaks to me about teaching yourself how to believe in your abundance, how to believe in your worthiness to achieve the things that you want to achieve, group number one. So really working on the mental aspect, the air is all about our knowledge, our wisdom, even our higher self, um, our belief system, our connection to spirit. Um, so breathing techniques may be very beneficial for you guys right now during like meditations and things like that, really focusing on connecting to the breath. And I also really feel like mental health, um, this may be what you're being asked to help somebody else with is like learning how to get out of a, a negative mental state. Interesting. So really working on your mentality is something super significant to your ability to receive right now, group number one, if you're wondering why what you're working towards or what you're wanting isn't coming in, if it's starting to create doubt, if it's starting to create like this belief that maybe I'm doing the wrong thing or I'm not worthy of this, there's definitely something here about the mentality being very connected to your abundance um, and helping somebody else with their mentality in some way, shape, or form. Interesting. Let's go ahead here and pull another card for group number one and see what else we have coming out for you. sensitivity. The frequency of sensitivity helps us to open the world of subtlety and detail while anchoring in a structural foundation, thus supporting us to become more fully multidimensional. So group number one, I feel like there's a need to really be sensitive to those around you, a need to really be sensitive to the energy around you because I really feel for you guys that the energy around you is teaching you more and kind of asking you more than the people or especially surrounding this person that may need your assistance. I feel like they aren't asking you, but you're going to be able to feel that. So there's definitely something here about really energetically feeling your way towards your abundance and towards assisting somebody else. I don't know why that's coming through here so strongly, but that seems very important and very connected to your own abundance and how you open up to receive. So um, interesting. 
with the sensitivity as well, like I was talking about, there's some sort of spiritual gift or blessing or activation occurring within your energy. And I feel like it could definitely be empathic and um, even kind of mental related telepathic type energies where you are able to communicate or understand what people need without them having to ask. And this is happening because you're being asked spiritually to assist somebody. It's like somebody's higher self coming in to ask you for help, group number one and and this encounter may be very significant um it may be like an activator to set you on the course to a purpose or kind of like a soul mission um as well that is something coming in here for some of you guys as well this is a very interesting reading <laughs> um let's continue here and pull a few more cards before we get into your tarot so group number one messages from this abundance mermaid what else oh Okay, I dropped them. Please hold. Okay, so here we have um, the rock with endurance. So there's definitely something here about needing to keep going, even when maybe your mind is telling you that you have went in the wrong direction. There's something here about perseverance, this endurance, this need to keep going, um, even though it may be kind of challenging for you right now. Um, this is about overcoming mental blockages. I feel for a lot of you guys, I feel for group number one, that there are some mental blockages that are really keeping you from your abundance. And that may be kind of what you're being asked to help somebody else with so that you can then kind of reflect and see those challenges within yourself. Um, we also have here animals with companionship yeah so there's um that's very validating here for group number one that there's definitely this definitely has to do with another person as well um and connecting to other people in some way shape or form for group number one for sure there's definitely something here about helping somebody else um about helping somebody else grow, about helping somebody else obtain security or stability mentally, maybe even financially for those of you that are in a position to help in that way, energetically, um, whatever it is, however this comes through for you. Group number one, you're being asked to help somebody. And I know I just keep saying that, but I don't, it seems very significant and it just keeps kind of like pushing its way into this reading. So let's pull a couple more cards here. So um, that's too many. Group number one. We have the wolf with instinct coming out. Yeah, see there's definitely something here about uh, trusting your energetic impressions. Um, being very open to receiving these energetic impressions as well group number one is going to be super significant to your journey um to your abundance uh being able to trust your intuition being able to trust the energetic impressions that you're receiving in regards to the people around you and maybe again how to help the people around you the wolf is also very much so uh, a very intelligent animal very intelligent the wolf may come through as kind of a spirit animal or spirit guide for you right now group number one as well especially since we have the animals here with companionship there's something here with animal medicine that is trying to teach you something and trying to lead you somewhere group number one the wolf may also represent and i'm really seeing like these mountains here like that's something coming in very kind of strongly as well which is kind of what leads me to believe that you're being asked to overcome like these blockages that you can't see through that you can't move um and I really feel for a lot of you guys that they're mental blockages and it's almost like you guys are like peaking the mountain right now so it's almost like a very pivotal moment within your journey for group number one that's coming through here We also have the blue groper with gender roles and tides with cycles. So some of you guys, there's something about 
divine masculine, divine feminine here. Um, some of you guys, this person that is connecting to you or energetically asking you for help could be your divine feminine or your divine masculine. Um, some of you guys are in the process of healing one or the other or both of those aspects of yourself. Um, I do feel for some of you guys that there is some twin flame cycles here or karmic um, cycles here. Interesting, um, especially with like that air, that Libra energy, that interaction energy. There's definitely something here about um, relationship cycles. So maybe you are entering a point in time in a connection, in a relationship where it's time to give back. If you've had somebody that give gave to you a lot in some way, shape or form. So I just had to uh, pause this reading and go answer the door and there was nobody there but the door was open um like the wind blew it open somehow or something like that so i feel like that's related to this reading and i feel like it has something to do with like having a revolving door or like an open door policy to somebody in your life that um maybe you've been separated from or um, you know, I, I feel like it's really related to the cycles energy and I feel like for group number one, there's somebody that's trying to come in, trying to come in your door, trying to like knock on your door, trying to get into your energy because they need assistance in some way, shape or form, but they don't know how to ask for it. Interesting. So let's get some tarot for group number one and see what else we have going on here. Uh, what else the the abundance mermaid wants you to know? Maybe this person um, doesn't feel like they're worthy of your help as well. That may be something that's coming through here. Or they don't feel like they deserve your energy or your help, your assistance in some way, shape, or form. Because maybe they did something in the past that caused a separation between you guys. Um, this could be a friend, somebody that you just were acquaintances with, or even um, it could be like an ex-partner in some way, shape, or form with the air element here. It's definitely something, somebody that you were connected to at some point. You may still be, but they may still kind of feel within themselves that they aren't worthy of help in some way, shape, or form, or they may be in a bad mental space. Um, but they're like energetically trying to knock on your door if you will interesting you may be dreaming of this person so we have strength coming out yeah, so there's definitely something here in regards to like courage, in regards to bravery, in regards to being able to face somebody or something that maybe you haven't been able to face or that somebody else hasn't been able to face. And I love how in this it's like somebody standing in this doorway here. There's like somebody metaphorically standing at your doorway right now, like knocking on your door needing you to be their rock, needing you to be their support, needing you to be their comfort, two of wands. And it's not it's it's not only outside of their comfort zone, but I also feel like it's outside of your comfort zone. It's making you look at this person, this situation or even your own life in a very different way. So there's definitely some perception shifts trying to come in here. And all of this relates back to your abundance group, number one. I feel for a lot of you guys that chose this pile, you've been working towards um, creating something or building your own business or trying to create like multiple income streams or just trying to create abundance in your life, especially since we had the sunstone and the um, adventure in, on your pile here. There's a huge energy of success financial success um material success and i feel like all of this energy that's coming through here is related to getting you to that abundance that you've been trying to manifest which is very interesting um let's pull another card here group number one 
we have the ten of swords and there's the cycles ending again so a lot of you guys here i feel like this person that's trying to ask for help um it, it could definitely be somebody that hurt you in the past um for some of you guys i i really feel for everybody that chose this pile, this is somebody from your past, somebody that you were connected to in some way, shape, or form. For some of you guys, this could be somebody that hurt you very, very deeply. And now helping them get better is kind of a completion to this cycle of pain and to the cycle of like mental fragmentation that you are in, but they are also in group number one. Interesting. So it's like shifting your perception, letting go of like this anger and being brave enough to come together to be able to heal, even though um, for a lot of you guys, this isn't even going to be about like reconciliation. This is about healing and like being honest with each other and allowing yourself to, you know, face the challenges of your past with a specific person or with people that are coming back to heal your past so that you can move forward. Let's pull some clarifications here. Group number one, why is strength here? We have the three of wands. Yeah, see, there is definitely like this need to have a lot of willpower, courage, and strength in regards to doing things a different way, um, especially in regards to people around you, um, being brave enough to face your past, being brave enough to explore your past, being brave enough to let go of your past and allow yourself to expand, allow yourself to see your past from a broader point of view instead of like hyper focusing on the pain or on the negative things that happened. There's something here about needing to see something as a whole um, in a bigger picture and not focusing like on one specific point in time or one specific person that maybe broke your heart or hurt you in some way, shape or form, but seeing your life as a whole and not allowing that one instance to kind of define the rest of your life or define the way you move forward. Um, this is a very interesting reading. I feel like for group number one, you guys are have been on a, quite a long journey um, and in quite a large cycle, I do feel for a lot of you guys that you've been doubting your ability to succeed in something. And it's like, there's just, there's just healing that you need to continue. And I feel like this healing that you're being asked to embark on is really about giving other people back their power that you're still holding that they had given you in the past that I feel like neither one of you are really aware that you're holding but there's definitely something here about confronting your past with somebody else and allowing yourself to um, do it out of a place of love out of a place of sensitivity out of a place of connection instead of out of anger out of fragmentation out of resentment out of blame um why is the two of wands here group number one seven of pentacles yeah see it's been a really long road for you guys it's been a very difficult road it's been a road of very slow moving energy very slow moving energy um and i just really feel like am i ever going to get over this am i ever going to be able to move on am i ever going to achieve what i've been working so hard for and the answer is yes you guys are like at a breaking point like i said it's like you're at the top of the mountain like you're about to like peak the mountain there's like this and and when you peak the mountain on the way the way down is much faster than the way up right and it's like you guys have been climbing this mountain for years even for some of you guys like 10 years even for some of you guys i um, mean it's been a very slow moving process but it's like everything is coming together now and every, all of the energies are aligning in a way where you are going to have to kind of face some things heal some things and approach some things in a new way in a way that maybe you can learn new lessons in a way where you can teach other people new lessons in a way where you can heal or help heal other people from the past because there's something here about like you weren't the only one that was hurt even though it may seem that way interesting why is the ten of swords here group number one 
judgment. Yeah, so there's like a final, this is like the final stretch of this cycle. There's, this is making something very final here. This is allowing yourself to release the anger, the resentment, the fragmentation. And choosing to move forward in a different way. Choosing to move forward not being defined by your pain. Not being defined by being broken. So this is really healing from karmic relationships. From karmic cycles. From some of you guys this is twin flame related. For sure. For some of you guys. Um where you're like both healing certain parts of each other and kind of stepping into the next phase of the twin flame journey. Um, interesting. So there's massive healing here, but it's, it's coming in in a way where you're being asked to give healing away in order to receive. Like to help somebody else heal their own fragmented energy in order for you to receive healing and abundance and material security and comfort as well. Interesting. So let's pull another message here for group number one. Group number one. A message from the Abundance Mermaid. We have setting up parameters. Access your relationships and determine how they are aligned with your goals. Setting boundaries requires an honest evaluation of your present relationships. So this is definitely connected to the people around you. Um, some of you guys, like I said, it's like somebody standing at the doorway knocking on your door. This is somebody that you haven't allowed back in your space, somebody that you've completely blacked out potentially for some of you that you're being asked to let in and to maybe assist. For some of you guys, you need to see where others are maybe draining you or exhausting you or asking too much of you. Um, and to approach that in a healthy way instead of maybe reacting with anger or aggression, um, Wow, so we do have the strength card here too, which I feel has a lot to do with the boundaries as well. Willpower, boundaries, um, courage, bravery to face certain connections, relationships that you haven't allowed back in your space since something happened in the past. Solar plexus energy, that self-doubt, self-esteem energy, self-worth energy. We have this endurance here with the rock, so there's definitely like this need to not give up. Like, don't give up in whatever it is that you've been working towards, group number one. Um, it's just there's healing that needs to be faced, that needs to be worked through before like your major success, your major breakthrough. Interesting. So let's pull some affirmations for group number one. We have healthy boundaries keep me centered and balanced. Look at that. Healthy boundaries keep me centered and balanced. So there is a need to evaluate your boundaries. Again, like I brought up that kind of revolving door energy. So maybe there was somebody in your past that kind of used you as a revolving door, but then maybe instead of balancing that, you just slammed the door shut completely and you no longer allow anybody in or out. Um, interesting. We also have, <laughs> when I let others shine, I shine too. How freaking perfect is that, group number one? When I let others shine, I shine too. So give the light away sometimes is what I get from that. I love myself completely and unconditionally. I love myself completely and unconditionally. Group number one, how beautiful. Let's pull one more of these. We have, I celebrate my lineage and honor my ancestors. So again, there's some, some need for connecting to your roots, to your home, to your comfort, 
to your ancestors. For some of you guys, this could definitely have to do with balancing the root chakra as well and allowing yourself to feel safe enough to allow people in or to tell people like where your boundaries are at, okay? Um, so let's pull you one final message, group number one, one final message, any last guidance or advice that spirit wants you to have in regards to this, any actions you're being asked to take. <laughs> we have anchor. Keep yourself grounded, especially while working through all of this air energy and this mental healing, this spiritual energy really work on keeping yourself grounded really work on keeping your root chakra balanced so that you feel safe enough to do this healing and this work that you're being asked to do in order to be able to receive the abundance that's waiting for you group number one wow such a beautiful message um but this is what i'm seeing for you guys if you enjoyed this reading if it resonated with you if it brought you value please hit that like button comment down below let me know if you chose this uh, let me know what other kinds of readings you guys would like to see. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you guys so very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hello, my beautiful group number two. Those of you that chose mermaid number two with the clear quartz point and the selenite, this reading is for you. And you guys chose the mermaid of contemplation. So there is a need for clarity here, but a big, big message coming through for group number two is to not make any impulsive decisions, to really allow yourself to explore um, your options, allow yourself to explore your thoughts, and this I really feel is about using your mind and your heart in kind of a cohesion, a cohesional kind of decision making process instead of choosing one over the other. So I feel like for group number two, there's something happening or there may be something coming in very soon for you that's going to make you want to act impulsively to follow your heart or to resist um, maybe your logical mind or to even resist your heart depending on the situation. That's going to be different for everybody, but there's something here, group number two, where you're being asked to allow yourself to have the time and the space to contemplate and to really get your mind and your heart on the same page before making any kind of rational decisions, life-changing life decisions, impulsive decisions. Um, interesting. There's also something here about maybe doing like some guided meditations to gain clarity or answers in some way, shape, or form. So I really feel for group number two that you guys are looking for some sort of answer um, to something. Even if you feel like you don't want the answer or you feel like you're resistant to the answer or you feel like you already 100% know what the answer is and you just want to jump right in head first. There's something here about needing to take a minute to pause, to contemplate to get your mind and your heart on the same page instead of resisting one or the other and kind of overindulging in the in the other one. Um, so let's pull a card here and see where this may be kind of at within your life group number two and see what we have going on. So Wow, we have yin coming out here. So this is your divine feminine energy wanting you to dive headfirst into taking care of something, nurturing something. Um, we have intuition, trust, patience, spirituality, and receptivity. So really what I feel for this with you guys is your divine feminine energy trying to keep you from some sort of toxic situation or even a toxic relationship, or even trying to keep you from causing an imbalance between your own masculine and feminine energy. I feel like group number two, you guys may have a history, a tendency to dive headfirst into relationships that maybe end up being toxic or that you end up losing yourself in. Or maybe you even use relationships as kind of a coping mechanism to not have to deal with the heartbreak of the last person. Like, that's something that's coming in here. Like, there's something here where you don't allow yourself to heal in between these impulsive decisions. 
And it's almost like your Divine Feminine is crying out for help right now, really asking you to take a minute to allow yourself to heal, to allow yourself to nurture yourself before you lose yourself in somebody else again. Um, okay, so that seems kind of like a little bit of a more specific message for you guys. So, um, you know, if you find this reading doesn't resonate with you, maybe choose another pile. But let's go ahead and see what else we have coming out here for you guys. What does this mermaid of contemplation want to say to you? Balance. Wow. Um, and this here says, The frequency of balance supports our ability to find harmony with all aspects of our three-dimensional and multi-dimensional layers of reality. Balance. Group number two. This is balance between your heart and your head. Balance between your masculine and feminine. Balance in your life, not allowing yourself to act impulsively, compulsively, not allowing yourself to use these impulsive decisions as a coping mechanism so you don't have to face the healing that is required from your soul right now. Your soul wants to heal. Um, so really what I'm seeing here for group number two is like needing to do the inner work instead of tipping all the way to one side or the other of the scales within yourself it's almost like you guys have been living in total extremes like you went from one extreme in one situation or relationship or environment in your life and in order to kind of combat the pain that that caused you went to the complete opposite extreme of that and it's like you've been doing this back and forth game instead of finding this middle ground it's like you, you know, uh, went into a relationship with your whole heart and maybe your heart got really broken. And so then you went into your next relationship with your heart completely closed off. And that ended in a very toxic or negative kind of way as well. And then you went back to like going with only your heart. And it's like been this back and forth energy for a very long time and I'm also really feeling for group number two that your divine feminine energy within yourself is very wounded and crying out for help very wounded that you've suppressed your divine feminine for such a long time or only used your divine feminine energy to nurture or to take care of somebody or something else that abused it in some way shape or form rain purification yeah and I see that with the the selenite and the clear quartz as well the purification energy there's a need for clarity for group number two a huge need for clarity within the self a huge need for balance within the self a huge need to take a minute to recover to balance before moving forward or making any kind of major decisions There's also something here about needing to like really allow yourself to trust your intuition or your inner senses right now. Like maybe you're very physically attracted to somebody or your mind is telling you that this is where you should go, but there's something within you, your intuition telling you that there's red flags that you need to pay attention to or that this is a bad place to be. Um, for some of you guys, maybe even like your shadow energy coming forth trying to warn you of something. But I do feel for you guys that your divine feminine energy is kind of within your shadow at this time as well anyways. So kind of both of those energies coming forth to kind of try to warn you of something. Um, to warn you of a negative situation. To warn you that you're going to get your heart broke. To warn you that you're going to um, put yourself in a toxic relationship or environment or situation in some way, shape, or form. That you really need to allow yourself to heal hear like you need to allow yourself to hear those messages that you're receiving intuitively about where it is you're trying to go right now group number two interesting some of you guys this may be about detoxing as well from any sort of like um substances that maybe you've been abusing or addicted to in order to kind of numb out the pain. Wow, okay. Um, let's pull some more cards, group number two. Oh, 
two. So we have marine life coming out here with richness. Yeah, I really feel for you guys that there is like a richness. Um, there is an abundance of like life force within you if you allow yourself to connect to it. I really feel for, for you guys in some way, shape, or form, you've kind of closed the door or numbed out your emotional body, numbed out your divine feminine energy. You've like numbed yourself and only kind of allow your external environment or people around you to kind of dictate who you are or where you go or what you do. And it's almost like as a coping mechanism for you to not have to face the pain that you feel within yourself. Um, we have the biome with connection. Yeah, there's a need to reconnect to self here. There's a need to allow yourself to feel your own emotions, to connect internally instead of externally here. I feel like you guys really have numbed yourself. The bottom of the deck here, we have ice, purity. You guys have numbed yourself. You've numbed your internal self so that you don't have to deal with that pain, so you don't have to face that pain wherever that pain came from. And there's a need to thaw yourself out here. Um... And the only way you're going to be able to do this, I feel, group number two, is to allow yourself to detach, to detach, to detox, to disconnect from your outside environment for a while. So some of you guys, this could be, you know, letting go of any substances that you use, addictions that you have, codependencies that you have, allowing yourself to like maybe stay home, um, not go out every single time you're offered an invitation, uh, disconnecting from social media, really detaching from your external environment and kind of going into this hermit mode to connect to yourself, to be able to feel your own emotions, to hear your own thoughts, and allow yourself to experience these. Um, it doesn't mean you have to become them or you have to allow them to consume you, but there's a need to acknowledge that they're there. Um, We then have this seagull with opportunity. Yeah, so there's something being presented to you where you're going to be given the opportunity to pull back, to pause, and to enter this contemplation mode. Or you're going to act impulsively. We have the eel with defensiveness. And I really feel, again, it's a defense mechanism that you guys are maybe kind of stuck in here. Um you kind of act against yourself or act against your past as a defense mechanism or as a coping mechanism to not have to deal with something that you've already experienced instead of actually taking the time to find if what whether or not this opportunity or this situation is actually good for you. You just do it to ex escape the previous energy that you were in. Um... So there's a message here for group number two that it's time to find yourself again. It's time to find who you are and what you actually desire instead of trying to escape the experiences that you've had. Um, let's get some tarot. We have the high priestess. And there's that yin energy again. There's a true need to allow yourself to open up to your internal self, to allow your high priestess energy out instead of trying to hide it away. Um, some of you guys may find that you are very secretive, maybe even lie a lot or hide your own emotions, hide your own feelings, hide your own thoughts. Um, and again, it's it's like a defense mechanism. I don't feel for you guys that it's out of this want or desire to hurt anybody else or to cause damage to anybody else, but you do it as a def defense mechanism, and it's very kind of ingrained into your subconscious to where it just kind of happens now, which I feel is why you're being asked to enter this hermit mode and allow yourself to go into your subconscious, to go into these deep meditations to go into deep contemplation to go into a deep hermit mode to kind of find how to transform yourself from the inside out instead of trying to protect 
yourself from yourself all of the, the time. Um, we have the star, healing, hope. Yeah, this is a very large, um, a very large kind of turning point in your life, if you allow it to be. Um, Queen of Swords, yeah, there's a need to reclaim your independence here, to reclaim yourself, to reclaim your freedom from anything that you're attached to, your defense mechanisms, your attachments, your habits, your addictions, codependencies. There's a need to detach from this and, and allow yourself to heal. Make the choice to heal, group number two. Make the choice to heal. Make that choice. Don't act like it's something that's just going to happen. Don't expect it to be something that's just going to happen or tell yourself that it's nothing that you could ever do or anything like that. You can. It's just a matter of making that choice and committing to that path instead of acting as though that path hasn't ever been presented to you so there's no way that you could ever go down it. it it is being presented to you right now right now group number two you just have to make the choice to to move down that path instead of resist it why is the high priestess here for group number two two of swords yeah, for you to really close off any external voices, any external opinions, any external attachments, and look within your yin energy, your divine feminine, look into your intuition, look into your emotions, look into your inner senses, and find the answer, answers there instead of expecting the answers to be something that comes to you from outside. They're not going to. We then have the Eight of Pentacles on the star. Yeah, it's going to be a process. It's going to be work. It's going to be um, something that you're going to have to put effort into. It's This healing isn't going to be something that falls in your lap. It's not going to be something that just shows up because you want it to. Um, you have to put the work in. Group number two, you have to put the work in. And you are being given an opportunity right now to make that choice to do so. Um So there's a need to choose yourself right now. And we have death coming out on the Queen of Swords. Yeah, it's time for change. It's time for transformation. It's time to allow yourself to let go of any codependency. Um, this is also Scorpio energy. So we have Scorpio, Aquarius um, energies coming out quite loud here. And Heavy Scorpio energy. I feel heavy Scorpio energy here. There is a need for change, a need for transformation, and a need of healing the shadow aspects of your divine feminine energy right now, group number two. And in order to do that, you have to listen to it. You have to allow it out. You have to stop trying to resist it. Stop resisting yourself. Um, wow. So let's pull another card for you, a message for group number two, please. So we have childlike devotion. You are a multi-talented a multi complex being. Embrace and love who you are. Embrace and love who you are, group number two. Um, we, I had four fall out, so we'll just take a peek at them. That's fine. Um, we have be insightful and established, ground and rebalance your energy, bring awareness into the now rather than allowing it to occupy the past or the future. We have empower yourself, tune into your personal power, you are more than able to handle the situation facing you. Allow yourself to be the strong, beautiful person you are capable of being love it and then we also have rediscover your zeal pay attention to the passion you are feeling for discovery learning exploration spirituality travel your work or your relationship passion and desire go together especially as inspiration yeah so you guys are really being asked to rediscover yourself rediscover who you are what you desire beautiful let's pull you guys some affirmations for group number two, some affirmations. We have, I am courageous, steady, and strong. Yes, 
And it takes that courage, that bravery, that steadiness to face yourself, group number two. It really does. To make that choice to heal, to make that choice to go down that road. But there's a need to know that there there is hope being reinstated for you right now. And healing. Um, major, massive healing that's going to be tr very transformational for you if you allow it in. You have to allow it to come in. Um... We have, I am on the right path and divinely guided. Yeah. Uh, follow that path to healing, group number two. Follow that path. Don't make any impulsive decisions or decisions out of this defensiveness or out of fear of facing these things. We have... My emotions move through cycles and connect me to my truth. Yeah, don't resist your emotions out of fear of feeling them. Don't do not do that to yourself because that's really your divine feminine, your high priestess, your inner senses trying to come through to relay messages about how to heal for you or what needs to be healed for you, group number two. We have collaboration brings more sweetness into my life and into the world. So some of you guys may need to ask for help in this healing process, and that's okay. There's a need to know that that's okay. You don't have to do this alone. Um, I know I was talking about, like, disconnecting from external energies, but that doesn't mean, like, putting yourself into this solitude energy and and making yourself go through your healing alone. This is about detaching from anything that holds you back, that keeps you stagnant, that keeps you in a toxic place um, in order for you to be able to reconnect to more healing energies. Um, We also have, I trust the mystery of life. So there's a huge need to trust kind of your inner senses, the more mysterious things that maybe you aren't as familiar with about yourself. Um, trust the unknown. Trust the path that you've never walked down before. Um, because that means, if you've never walked down it before, that means you're going to a new destination a place you've never been. And although that can be kind of scary or intimidating, because yes, there's always a possibility that it's going to, you know, end in a more negative way than what you want it to. But there's also a very large possibility that it's going to end in a very positive way. And there's a need for you to focus on positivity right now, I feel, for group number two. Let's go ahead and pull you one final message. Any last guidance or advice from this contemplation mermaid, from your spirit guides, any guidance, advice, or actions you should be taking right now for group number two. Move. Barnacles only grow on a docked ship. Yeah, see, allow yourself to travel down the road you've never been down before. And that road right now for group number two is the road of healing your divine feminine energy. Um, but this is what I'm seeing for you guys. If you enjoyed this reading, if it resonated with you, if it brought you value, please hit that like button. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this reading. Let me know what other kinds of readings you guys would like to see. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you guys so very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hello, my beautiful group number three. Those of you that chose card number three with the obsidian and the smoky quartz stones, this reading is for you. And you guys chose the mermaid of re-energize. Um, so here, a couple of things coming through for you guys is, um, first of all, the food that you're eating is something that's coming in here quite strongly, like maybe you guys need to eat or um, be more mindful of what you're putting into your body um, and, and kind of maybe keeping track of how certain things are affecting your energy levels. As well as for some of you guys, this could have to do with certain people that you're around, experiencing people that maybe drain life from you or drain your energy. Um, in some way, shape, or form, so there's a need to kind of be aware of how you're feeling around certain people in your life and whether or not it's making you feel lethargic or drained or heavy even. 
some of you guys um, maybe need to sleep or need to address like your sleep patterns. <clears throat> And some of you got, well, I feel everybody that chose this pile really need to just kind of take a day of re-energizing, recuperation, um, like a spa day or a, a self-love day, a mental health day. There's like just this need to take a day for group number three um, to kind of recharge and re-energize yourself. Some of you guys have some like energetic leaking happening I feel and by that I mean there is too much of your energy being poured out into certain areas or to certain people in your life that maybe you have kind of lost control of um, maybe you feel like you're not in control or you don't have the ability to say no or pull back when you need to pull back and it's like there's just this constant pull on your energy in some way shape or form that you guys are being asked to address as well especially with the obsidian and the smoky quartz there's really a need to protect your energy right now and this doesn't mean that people are being you know negative or people are being like harmful or intending to drain you even they may not even realize that they're doing it but there is a need to protect your energy uh, for group number three let's go ahead and pull another card here and get some more information about how or where you're needing to protect your energy or how to maybe re-energize we have Aries coming out um, we also have these two that flipped over so we're going to touch on them for a second as well we have Uranus with radical radically change and house nine with spiritual growth so I feel for a lot of you guys that maybe you are going through a period of transformation a period of expansion that is requiring more energy right now and that may be why you're being asked to really focus on protecting your energy at this time so you guys here have Aries and this is independent bravery and passion So some of you guys are really needing to come into this independence and to self here instead of maybe some of you guys may be kind of codependent on something or on someone at this time. And that may be why your energy is kind of fluctuating so much because maybe you're relying on other people to do certain things or to get certain things done. There's just something here where I feel you guys like really relying or counting on somebody else to do something that needs to be done. And there's a need for you to take responsibility for this or for you to be able to do this so that you can stop stressing or worrying about it. Interesting. So let's go ahead here and pull another message for group number three. So there is a need to kind of take charge to do what needs to be done so that you can stop stressing about it, stop thinking about it, stop worrying about whether or not it's going to get done. This kind of energy, at least right now. Um, and then we have expression coming out for you guys. And this here says the frequency the frequency of expression supports our ability to bring out our true essence through many forms of communication so group number three i feel like there is something here where you guys are really being asked to express maybe expressing your needs express that you need to take a day express that maybe you need help with certain things instead of maybe just expecting certain things to get done or certain people to do certain things there's really a need some of you guys maybe to ask for help um there's just this kind of energy here where there's a need to express how you're feeling, what you're feeling, and what you need or what you need to do about this, okay? Uh, some of you guys may be needing to kind of accept or admit that you need to take a step back, that you need to recoup, that you need to re-energize. Some of you guys have been charging ahead, kind of bulldozing your way through life or through some sort of project or through some sort of work that you're really needing to take some time off here take a vacation
we have clouds coming out with shape shifting yeah so there's really a message here for group number three to for one know that you don't have to do everything alone you don't have to be everything and do everything um, in order for everything to get done for some of you guys there is way too much of a focus on whether or not certain things get done or like just this need there's there's really just this overabundance of like energy focusing on tasks and things that you feel absolutely have to get done that is causing a lot of stress a lot of anxiety that you're really draining a lot of yourself a lot of your energy into trying to be everything all at once and there's really a need to find a balance here you're overworking you're overexerting you're exhausted group number three and there's a need to know that you're not going to do your best work unless you are at your fullest energetic state um so that is important like your health your energy your motivation your passion like those things are important and there's a need to put effort into that as well instead of just like i just really feel for group number three this overwhelming sense of like charging ahead bulldo bulldozing your way through everything trying to get everything done trying to do everything by yourself out of this kind of mentality that if you leave it for somebody else or um it's not going to get done or if somebody else does it it's not going to get done correctly um, so there's a need to kind of let go of that mentality here and really focus on re-energizing, refueling yourself and allowing somebody else to step in and do the things that have to get done. Allowing yourself to ask for help instead of just assuming that nobody's going to do it or that others aren't going to do it right. Um, let's go ahead and pull some more cards. We have air with motion, which I find very interesting with the clouds here as well and the shape-shifting. Um, yeah, I feel you guys are really, really like highly work-oriented. Like you are a workhorse. You are like the ram here with the Aries. You are like this full force ahead kind of person and... Um, right now it's really, it's, it's really taking a toll on your body and on your energy and there's a need to kind of pull back the reins, okay? Um, and then we have cleansing with storms, um, and the clouds again. So clouds may be something that's very significant for you guys at this time as kind of a sign synchronicity symbol. You may also be feeling very clouded, like mentally. Um, and then we have pressure with transformation. Yeah. It's almost like you guys feel like you're under a lot of pressure right now. Maybe you're trying to reach certain deadlines or trying to reach a certain kind of accomplishment within a certain amount of time. There's just something here where you guys put yourself under a lot of pressure to be everything and to do everything. And there's really a need to include yourself in that everything list. Um, <laughs> So prioritizing, maybe asking for help, expressing that you need to take some time for yourself or that you need somebody to kind of pick up some slack for you is super vital for you right now. You guys are going through an expansion and your energy is required within yourself in order for this expansion to be able to take place. Um, and, you know, with the Aries energy here, this independence and this bravery, but also this message of not feeling like you have to do everything alone, you know, sometimes it takes bravery and courage to to ask for help or to ask for something or to accept or acknowledge that you need assistance. That doesn't mean you aren't independent. That means you're you're willing to understand your limits there's really a big message here for group number three in order like there a need to really kind of accept and understand your own limitations instead of constantly trying to exhaust or exert yourself in a way that is unhealthy okay a lot of air energy here a lot of clouds here um you guys could be air signs you don't have to be but that energy is definitely here this quick moving kind of sharp energy here 
coming out quite strongly. Um, I'm seeing you guys as kind of like with this Aries energy here, like you guys need to breathe life into your kind of life force again, okay? Um, you need to like re-spark the flame, reignite the flame by breathing life into yourself instead of like these outbursts of energy, I feel. I feel like you guys maybe are at this point where it's almost like your energy is flickering, like you can go real hard for a minute, but then you are so exhausted, you have to stop and there's really a need to like create a balance here. I hope that makes sense for you guys. Let's pull some more cards here. We have the starfish coming out with symbols. This is also number 33. Um, so again, like the clouds, the stars, the sky, maybe even potentially astrology may be coming through as certain signs, synchronicities, symbols for you guys. Um, and we also have the turtle with instinct. Okay, so group number three, there's something here about really needing to be able to determine the difference between your instinct and your survival mode. A lot of you guys may be feeling like your instincts are telling you that this won't get done if I don't do it, but really that's your anxiety speaking, not your instincts. Um, so there is like this need to kind of separate your instinct from your anxiety or your stress, really be able to find that line between those things instead of allowing those things to make the decision for you to continue to exhaust yourself, okay? Um, so yeah, there's really a need to pull your energy back, to protect your energy, to recharge yourself, because um, you guys are going through a transformation, you're going through an expansion, and your energy is required elsewhere right now. Let's pull you guys some tarot, group number three, and see what else we have coming out from this beautiful mermaid energy from your guides. What does group number three need to know about this? So we have the page of wands coming out here. Yeah, so there's a need for fun. There is a need for you to have fun, um, a need for like a work play balance here for group number three. We have the world coming out here and we have death coming out here. Wow. Um, so yeah, you guys are at the end of a very major cycle and there's a need to kind of take a break. You guys have done a lot of work. This could have to do with your career or with like actual physical creative projects or things that you've been working towards that you've been under a lot of pressure with. But regardless of this cycle that you've been going through or this, this work that you've been doing, it is coming to an end. And at the end of this cycle, there's a need to kind of let go, a need to re-energize, a need to refuel, a need to have fun, a need to replenish in order to kind of be your best self moving forward from this, whatever this is for you, group number three. Um, so big, big need to have fun, to let go of being so serious, to let go of this kind of structured mentality that if you have fun you're somehow not going to get all the things done that you need to get done or that it's immature i feel for group number three there's some sort of like subconscious mentality that having fun or going out or letting go or letting loose a little bit is related to a sense of immaturity and you guys are being asked to kind of overcome that mentality right now So I really feel for group number three that this bravery that's coming in here has a lot more to do with being brave enough to let go instead of being brave enough to charge forward, okay? Um, letting go of the reins, letting go of control a little bit, letting go of being so serious. Let's 
clarify we have the eight of wands coming out on the page of wands yeah so there is a big big message here for you guys to stop waiting around for this confirmation that you're you're allowed to go have fun stop waiting around for I feel like I feel you guys waiting for like oh well I'll know when I'm able to stop working so hard I'll know when I'm able to let go of control I'll know when I've completed enough of my work in order for me to be able to put my attention somewhere else and spirit is saying like stop waiting around for somebody or something or some sort of symbol or synchronicity or sign or something to tell you something that you're not willing to do because right now what I'm really feeling for group number three is that you just aren't willing to go have fun and you're kind of pushing it off as saying like it's not the right time or I have to have my focus here or my attention here because this is the where my instinct is at when really that's where your anxiety or your worry is at, okay? Um, and also with the Eight of Wands, there is a lot of signs and synchronicities um, and messages coming through for you, but I feel like you may be misinterpreting them because you are in such a serious mentality. It's really hard for you to interpret like intuition and things that are more fluid right now. Um, why is the world here? Group number three. We have the Knight of Wands coming out. Yeah, so group number three, what I'm hearing here is, um, what is the point in doing all of the work if you don't use the progress you've made to actually be able to go do the things you enjoy? Um, you're kind of burning yourself alive here. Like, that's really what I'm seeing here. Like, I, I feel there's like this cycle trying to close. There's this part of your life coming into completion where the hard work is over and now it's time to let go. It's time to have fun. It's time to stop sacrificing all of your joy and happiness in order to continue working. What's the point in working if you only allow yourself to work and don't ever allow yourself to use all of that work that you've put in to go have fun every once in a while? Like, we also have the Ten of Pentacles coming out on death. Okay, so there is a major cycle closing in regards to your physical resources, in regards to your abundance, in regards to your career, in regards to like your your legacy even. So it's like you guys have reached this point where you've put in the work and now it's time to go have fun and allow this work to transform in the way that it needs to. It, it's time for you to indulge it's time for you to you know let go a little bit and allow yourself to enjoy all of the work that you've put in I hope that makes sense for you yeah you guys have put the work in now it's time to like reap the rewards of the work that you've put in but you have to allow yourself to do that and I feel like you guys have been in this work mode for such a long amount of time that this may be very difficult for you to allow yourself to let go to allow yourself to pull back on the reins to allow yourself to you know really withhold your energy and and hold back or maybe ask others for help or ask others to have fun um I just got kind of emotional there like I feel some of you guys that chose this pile need this so desperately you need this happiness and this joy and to be able to go have fun and to be able to kind of indulge in all of the things that you've created um, to allow yourself to let loose allow yourself to enjoy life so let's pull Another message for group number three. We have Amble with contentment. Waiting rather than acting is going to be most advantageous right now. So group number three, what I'm really getting from this is like there is a need to wait on you know, that next project, there's a need to 
really kind of hone in the work that you're doing. I feel you guys just being spread far too thin and there's a need to pull back from that to allow yourself to have the time to go have fun, to allow yourself to, you know, hold off on that next project, to give yourself a break. Um, really, just, just give yourself a break, group number three. Let's pull some more cards. You guys may have um, been drawn to another pile as well and if that's the case there may be some messages in there for you um, but let's let's pull you guys some affirmations here group number three allow yourself to be content with the work that you've done instead of expecting more out of yourself um, so we have collaboration brings more sweetness into my life and into the world. Group number three, allow yourself to ask for help. Allow other people to offer their assistance. Allow other people to pull their weight instead of just expecting that you have to do everything on your own. Um, collaboration brings more sweetness into my life and into the world. Letting go of that control, allowing people to do the work in the way that is right for them versus needing them to do it the way that you would do it. We have, <laughs> look at this, play is my pathway to joy, group number three. Play is my pathway to joy. We also have, I welcome clear vision and inspired action. Yeah, and I really feel for a lot of you guys, if you've been feeling stagnant or not quite sure where to go or needing that clarity, um, allowing yourself to let go of this control, allowing yourself to play, allowing yourself to have fun is going to allow yourself to see things from a different perspective and a much more clearer perspective as well. Um, instead of trying to force this clarity, um, you know, that may be kind of the clouds energy coming in here as well. Like, we also have, I unleash my wildness and choose to be free. Yeah. Yep. Um, allowing yourself to be free of your own expectations or of your, yeah, really, of your own expectations. Like, I, there's no need to clarify that. That is what I meant to say. Allowing yourself to be free from your own expectations, group number three. Let's pull you one final message. Any last guidance, advice, or actions you're being asked to take at this time for group number three? Okay, we have a few that want to come up. We have the ocean. Be beautiful, mysterious, wild, and free. Yeah, um, stop putting so many restrictions on yourself. Allow yourself to step outside of your routine, outside of your, you know, your structure, your seriousness. You guys may have a lot of Capricorn or Saturn placements within your birth chart. That's here quite strongly. We also have self-care. Drowning doesn't always require water. We have patience. The tide will come in when it's ready. Stop trying to force it. We have safety. Don't be too proud to go back to shore. Group number three. Wow. Um, and we have flow. Let your worries drift away. Wow. That was so perfect. I'm glad that I read all of those for you guys, but this is what I'm seeing for my beautiful group number three. If you enjoyed this reading, if it resonated with you, if it brought you value, please hit that like button. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this. Let me know what other kinds of readings you guys would like to see. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you guys so very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Hello, my beautiful group number four. Those of you that chose card number four with the blue calcite and the lepidolite stone, this reading is for you. And just based off of the stones on this pile, I really feel for a lot of you guys that there is like a healing um, of some shadow energy or some easing of some shadow energy that you've been experiencing. Um, and here you guys also chose uh, the move forward card. I love that. Um, so yeah, you guys, there's something here about like moving on, moving forward, or like having an something become easier, uh, letting go of something becoming easier. There is, um, it's almost like the way forward is 
is opening up or like some sort of blockage is kind of dissipating that is allowing you to now move forward. Um, there's definitely like some healing of mental energies here as well for a lot of you guys. And a healing um, from the past in some way, shape, or form. So let's go ahead, group number four, and see where this may be kind of um, at in your life. What area of your life may this be happening in group number four? We have house one, individuality, self-image, and approach to life. You guys are finding a way to move forward in a much more authentic way and you're also healing your self-image, the way you see yourself, the way you perceive yourself, the way you think of yourself um, is changing, which is absolutely beautiful. Group number four, I absolutely love this. You're embracing your individuality and your uniqueness instead of seeing it as a weakness or as something that holds you back or something that is negative. Um, and I love that. And you're allowing those things to kind of guide you forward in a new way, I feel. If not, you're about to be. I absolutely love this energy, group number four. So there's some self-acceptance coming in in a very large way. In certain parts of yourself where maybe you looked at them negatively um, previously or in a way where you thought it was a bad thing or you thought it was negative because it wasn't like everybody else. That mentality is changing. That perception of self is changing and I absolutely love that. So a lot of self-acceptance and healing group number four. Okay. We have two that want to come out, so we'll take a look at both of them. So here we have, we have commitment. The frequency of commitment supports our ability to devote ourselves in all aspects of our being and with unwavering belief. I feel like you guys are committing to yourself. You're committing to being yourself in a, a much larger way than you have ever been able to before. Um, so there's something here where it's like you've recognized how you've hid yourself away in order to make other people more comfortable or in order to make other people happy or to meet other expectations of who you're supposed to be. You're no longer allowing those things to change who you are. Um, so there's more of yourself kind of shining here, group number and I love that. We also have the first chakra. The energy of the root chakra supports our sense of safety in a physical world and reminds us to enjoy our physical body. So group number four, you guys are coming into a space where you are able to feel safe and secure in yourself and in who you truly are. And in that ability to feel safe and secure, you're able to express that in a much bigger way. Um, it, so there is parts of yourself that you were scared to show before that are solidifying into your reality. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Group number four. Let's go ahead and pull some more cards here. So with this um, safety energy coming in here as well, group number four, there's like this healing of anxiety, this healing of a uh, mentality of always trying to find where the danger is coming from. That is easing for you guys. That is healing for you guys. You're no longer looking for the worst case scenario or looking for the pain or looking for the danger anymore. Um, I love that. not saying that those ideas those thoughts won't ever come through but they're not the only thoughts coming through and they're not the only thoughts that you're focusing on anymore which makes them feel much smaller in significance group number four we also have the cave with protection i love it there's such an immense amount of safety and security coming through in this reading and we have volcanoes with power you guys are calling back your power um, finding the power in your uniqueness, finding the strength in 
your authenticity instead of looking at it as a negative thing you're using it to empower yourself i absolutely adore this reading and we have waterfall with effortless yeah it, it's much m much less strenuous for us to just be ourselves than to try to control who we are in front of certain people or around certain situations. Um, and then we have childhood with innocence. You guys are healing your inner child. That's the part of you that's been hit away, I feel, for a lot of you guys, or that was traumatized or hurt or felt scared or unsafe in some way, shape, or form. And um, that's healing. That's beautiful. Wow. We also have the giant clam with harmony, and this is number 11, which may be significant to some of you guys, but uh, harmony, yeah, you're finding, you're finding a way to move forward that is, it's like allowing, again, with this effortless, it's like some sort of blockage or barrier has dissipated and you are able to just glide forward without having to strain yourself or without fear, without feeling scared, without feeling insignificant. Um, wow. It's like everything is just falling into place for you, group number four. The more self-acceptance you come into, the more you're going to be able to move forward. Um, let's pull you some tarot group number four and see what else we have coming out here. What other messages do you need to hear right now? We have the hermit. Yeah, see you guys are finding yourself. We have the five of swords. And we have the Nine of Wands. Yeah, see, where you guys were once super defensive, where you were always in this fight or flight mode, I feel you guys, I feel, I really feel for group number four that you guys went through a period in your life where you constantly felt like you had to defend this part of yourself that you weren't even willing to share or express. Um, you you held on to it, you harbored it as a form of kind of self-protection. But you guys are realizing at this time in your life that's actually been more of a self-deprivation act where you've been depriving yourself of that part of you, you've been depriving the world of that part of you um, because you felt the need to protect it. Um, but that actually just left you feeling far more empty than than protected. It made you feel far less stable than safe. Um, so you are coming out of this kind of defensive energy here, um, allowing all of yourself to shine instead of feeling like you need to change who you are in the physical reality in, the, in order to protect parts of yourself that you aren't willing to share. Um, so I really don't feel like this was about fearing other people not accepting you or fearing like betrayal or abandonment. You guys may have some abandonment issues and that may be what forced you to kind of suppress certain parts of yourself to begin with. But I feel like this was more about needing to feel safe enough to express yourself versus being scared that others wouldn't accept you. There was like a lot of wounded inner child energy here. So this could have stemmed from your childhood or from the environment that you grew up in in your childhood or like maybe you were taught this kind of energy of not allowing yourself to be who you really are or to hide the parts of yourself that other people may perceive as maybe immature or 
um, even to hide the parts of yourself that were innocent or pure because the world is a dangerous place and they, the world will like taint those parts of you. There's just something here where you hid parts of yourself away in order to protect yourself in order to keep those parts safe, but it really made you live a very empty life. Um, let's get some clarification here, group number four. I really see for you that you guys are, are finding yourself and accepting yourself and allowing all of yourself to be present instead of fighting to keep parts of yourself hid away. So we have the page of wands on the hermit. Yeah, you guys are finding the part of yourself um, that is excited for life, that is excited to explore, that is... It's like the part of yourself that would follow the, the breadcrumbs, the part of yourself that would go explore the candy house in the forest, if you will. That part of you is coming out, the, the part of you that has the wonder for life, the excitement for life, the, it's almost like the part of you that gets awestruck by the beauty of life is finally coming out again. And then we have the Knight of Cups coming out on the Five of Swords. And look at this child up here laying on the clouds. We also have an eagle in both um, the Hermit card and the Knight of Cups which speaks to me of freeing this part of yourself, freeing yourself from these barriers that you've put up as a form of self-protection. With the Knight of Cups here, this is about offering your self-love, offering your inner child love. I really feel like offering your self-love and acceptance and like really finding this new image of self um, is freeing to this inner child and it's healing to this inner child and then we have the king of pentacles on the nine of wands yeah so you guys are going to be feeling much more stable in control and secure in your environment um, instead of defending yourself from your environment I feel like that may have been an energy that you grew up in. You may have lived a life that where you were surrounded by a lot of danger, a lot of drama, a lot of abuse, maybe. Um, and you guys are coming into a time in your life where you're recognizing that you are in control of your environment now and your environment is safe and you no longer have to defend yourself from it. Um, you don't have to defend yourself from the world. You don't have to be in constant fear of danger anymore. I love that. So a lot of healing, a lot of healing of the inner child, a lot of freedom, a lot of finding yourself um, in order to move forward in a much more effortless way. Again, with this blue calcite, there's like an ease coming in here for you guys. Let's pull you a message, group number four. A message for group number four. Okay, we have two that want to come out, so I will take them both. So here we have distinctive potential. Rely on your faith and the knowledge that nothing is impossible. Use your determination to hang in there until you realize a goal. So you guys are really going to be finding direction, I feel, at this point in time on your journey. And then we have leaping through the air. A plan you have made is on track. If you are waiting for something, get to work and stop putting off ideas or projects you are considering. And this is the moving forward, you guys. You are being asked to try something um, that you've been thinking about. Allow yourself to dive into whatever kind of project or energy that you have been thinking about because the way has cleared for you to move forward in these areas with your inner child healing there's going to be a lot of creative potential coming back up in your life here um so let's pull you some affirmations group number four some affirmations for group number four we have I live each moment with a presence of gratitude, and I love this, this creation energy, this inner child energy, this abundant energy. You guys are coming into this 
mentality that there is so much beauty around you that there's so much to be grateful for instead of again like I said like only focusing on the negative or only being able to see the potential danger or the things that could cause you harm your your perception is expanding and therefore making this fear of danger much smaller and much less significant um so if you find yourself kind of wavering back and forth or struggling with feeling safe, there's a need to kind of list the things that you're grateful for and find the positivity um, to shift your attention, okay? We have, we are all sisters and reflect the divine in one another. I love that card. Um, so group number four with that, there's definitely some kind of like I said, like some shadow work, some reflective energies happening within your life right now. Um, so there's a need to find the beauty in others as well as yourself, or you are, as you find this new self-image, recognizing the beauty in others as well. Um, we also have, I am ready. Thank you. I love that. I am ready. Thank you. And we see that here with the leaping through the air, the distinctive potential. There's something building here for you. There's creative potential building here for you, group number four. And you have to take the leap of faith into it. Um, I love it. So let's pull you up one final message or any last messages from spirit, any last messages, advice, guidance, or actions you should be taking right now for group number four. Okay. So here we have dance, take inspiration from the moonlight dancing on the surface of the sea. I absolutely love that. Um, so, you know, allow yourself to really find inspiration and in, in fun and be excited about life and allow that to guide you. We have <laughs> safety. Don't be too proud to go back to shore. Um, so again, if you find yourself feeling unstable or finding that fear or um, starting to focus on the danger, allow yourself to regroup, allow yourself to step back, allow yourself to rebalance. And then we have move. Barnacles only grow on a docked ship. I love that. Move forward. You know, allow yourself to stabilize if you begin feeling overwhelmed or stressed or fearful, but move forward. Group number four, you guys are moving forward and it's going to be happening much easier than it ever has before the more acceptance of self and the more healing of this inner child that's that's happening the easier it's going to be for you to take that leap of faith the easier it's going to be for you to take chances for you to take risks for you to take a step um but this is what i'm seeing for my beautiful group number four if you enjoyed this reading if it resonated with you hit that like button comment down below let me know if you chose this pile let me know what other kinds of readings you guys would like to see don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already i thank you guys so very much for watching and i will see you guys next time bye